I'm Zara Well, I'm the developer of um, this iScholar uh, refraction and retinoscopy tutorial. And uh, I just spent the morning doing yard work and I look really gross. And I was just about to take a shower and put on a nice shirt, maybe my lab coat, get into a well-lit area or maybe even an exam lane and, and kind of make a nice polished tutorial. And then I thought, um, this is kind of the whole point of my tutorial is to be able to learn in more comfortable environments. Um, sometimes it's nice just to be able to work through these things on your own time and at your own convenience. And uh, I thought, what the heck, I'll just make this tutorial when I'm sweaty and gross and uh, outside in the sun with the you know, lighting probably not where it needs to be. And there's birds and dogs around that'll probably interrupt me, but that's okay. That's okay. So uh, I thought, uh, let's see, why don't we do a retinoscopy simulator today? And uh, I could do plus cell or minus cell. I think I'll do plus, yeah, I'll do minus cell. Uh, we'll go to the simulator. And here we can choose just a random patient, or we can say if we want a myope, a hip rope, somebody with astigmatism, somebody without astigmatism, depending on if you want to learn a particular thing or practice a particular thing. You also have the option of just manually creating a patient. So you can say, I want to scope a minus 7, minus 4, axis 93, and that's the patient you'll get. And uh, you won't be surprised at the outcome, but it'll give you a chance to practice on something specific if you want to. But let's just do a random patient and um, get started here. And I think I'll do, you can do trial lenses. Uh, I'm going to do the refracting instrument. I've set my working distance to 150 because that's what I use in real life. I have long ape-like monkey arms and uh, uh, I like to practice uh, with the same situation I would be in clinic. If you use uh, plus two working distance, then, uh, uh, then choose that. It really won't make a difference as far as what you do while you're scoping, but it will make a difference with uh, how you um, uh, how you determine the final result. So let's get started. Let's just see what we're seeing here. Um, I'm seeing a little bit of width motion currently, and boy, it looks pretty neutral right here. So this this might be an easy one. So maybe I should start over. But what's that people jumping around? I'll have to fix that. Um, okay, yeah, pretty neutral there with motion here, but I'm doing a minus cylinder retinoscopy here on a minus cylinder instrument. So I want to refine, neutralize the more plus or less minus power first. So let's do that. Let's give this some plus till this gets neutral. Ah, that's neutral. And let's go to 90 degrees away. And now we see against motion. And that's what we want. We're doing a minus cell um, uh, refracting instrument here. And when we switch to the cell, we want to see against motion because we only have the option of adding minus cylinder. So uh, we're close to 90. Are we exactly at 90 or 180? I don't know. I think we are pretty close to 180. So. Uh, let's just add some minus cylinder. Keep going. Yeah, it's pretty neutral. Yeah, that's pretty neutral. This looks good. This one's going to be pretty easy. Maybe I should re record this just to do a tougher one. Yeah, so spinning around, I think I'm neutral at every angle. So I think we have a good one. So now, uh, I've neutralized this, but when I see neutral, that means that uh, this patient is now focusing at the distance of my retinoscope, which is great. But, you know, when I prescribe glasses, they're probably going to want to see far away. So I need to deal with my working distance here. I'm using a 150, so that means I have to add minus 150 to my result. I could add that to 1. 1 plus minus 150 is minus 50. But usually what I like to do is just um, 
start clicking on the sphere wheel and go up six steps because six times a quarter, 0.25, six times 0.25 is 150, and that's what I want. So if my habit is to finish retinoscopy and go one, two, three, four, five, six, then I don't have to do any math, which isn't hard, but I don't have to do it. I don't have to potentially make a mistake. And usually what I'm going to do in this case is do retinoscopy on both eyes and then refract this patient. And it's nice to have their distance power in the instrument uh, right off the bat. So let's see. This is my result. I want to see how I did. I'm going to hit finish. I'm going to put result in, my result in here, which should be incorporating the working distance, which we've already done. So I'm just going to read right off my instrument. I have a minus 0.5. I have a minus 1 sill. My axis uh, in the instrument was 180. And let's see how this... Oh, that was really close. So I got the sphere dead on. I got the cylinder. Uh, axis 180 was my result. 176. I call that a win. Uh, looks like the tutorial does too. It says uh, my patient's seeing better than 2015, which uh, is pretty impressive. Um, and uh, yeah, I think if this wasn't dead on or this close, you know, the good news is usually you're going to refract these patients afterwards and clean it up. So you want to be close, but getting exact sometimes isn't possible. Uh, but if I could not refract this patient for some reason and I prescribe this, uh, this patient uh, would be would be very happy and be seen very well. So thanks for listening. I hope it was helpful to get a sense of how to use the tutorial and maybe learn a little bit something about uh, how to do retinoscopy too. Thank you.